Hello there, welcome to another makeover video. This time I'm transforming this outdated and dark hallway into something bright and airy. This is a budget friendly makeover so I'm going to show you how a simple paint job and a few minor upgrades can make a huge difference to your space. If you do not have a lot of budget then painting by yourself is the best way to go and I will show you everything you need to know for tackling your own space. But first, when you want to do a room makeover, you have to ask yourself what is that you don't like in this space. List them down, then create a mood board with all your inspirations and then tackle one by one. Currently, this hallway is dark with wood doors and trims. So let's handle them first. Swapping with new doors is going to be very pricey. So I'm going to paint all the doors and I will show you how. First, remove the doors by unscrewing the hinges. It will be a good idea to get someone to hold the door while you remove the hinges from the frame. Then move the door into an open area and place it on a raised surface or on a sawhorse like this. They are just cheap plastic ones and they cost less than $15. To paint a wood surface, basically you have to follow 5 golden steps. Prepping, sanding, cleaning, priming and then finally painting. Each step has its own purpose and I will explain everything to you. First step, prepping. First, remove the hinges and door handles from the door. Well, you can tape them off, but removing them will give you a much better finish. If you see any nail holes or dents, then this is the time to add some putty. Next, sanding. Pick a sanding block or a palm sander and sand down with 180 grit sandpaper. This is a step I always hate to do, but sanding is an important step you shouldn't skip. This will get rid of the sheen that is already there on the wood. Basically, you have to remove the glossiness and expose the wood. Only then the primer and paint you are going to apply will stick properly to the surface. Make sure to wear a good mask while you sand. Repeat the prepping and sanding on the other side too. Third step is cleaning. After sanding, vacuum all the dust and give a good wipe down with alcohol or any cleaning liquid. Next, the most important step, priming. Though we have sanded down the door surface, there are these recessed wood grain areas where the sander couldn't get through. Getting each and every groove sanded will become a nightmare. So I opted to use this oil-based primer that is made specially to cover the wood stains. Apply a thin coat using a foam roller like this. Let it dry and do a second coat. Since this is a dark wood, you will need to add at least two coats of primer. The smell of this oil based primer can be overwhelming. So wear a mask, also do this in a ventilated area. The door color should be gone after two coats. If not, apply a third coat of primer. Next, the painting. I did some sample tests and bought a very light grey colour. It's called Platinum from Bear. Remember to get the right sheen. There are flat, matte, eggshell, satin, semi-gloss and high-gloss finishes. Higher the sheen, 
glossier it is, then it's more resistant to dirt and stains. Since trims and door are usually prone to a lot of wear and tear, it's better to go for a semi-gloss or high gloss. Always use a foam roller to get a fine finish without any brush strokes. Apply first coat, let it dry and do a second if needed. Repeat the same for the other side too. I repeated the steps for all the doors. In total, I had to paint 5 doors here. While that dries, paint the trim and baseboards. You have got to repeat the same 5 golden steps I mentioned before to paint the wood trims and baseboards. But there is one step I skipped. Sanding. Cause I'm just lazy. Instead, I gave a good wipe down with alcohol to degloss the surface. It's not as effective as sanding, but it seems to work if you're using a good primer. But before priming the trims and baseboards, use painter's cork to fill the gaps like this. Cut a small hole at a 45 degree angle and insert into the applicator. Then hold the angle edge down over the gap and apply the caulking. Move slowly by pressing the trigger. This will release an even line of caulking. Then use a finger or a spoon and swipe over the cork line like so with little pressure. This will remove the excess and provide a clean line of application. Once dry, it's ready for priming and painting. Instead of taping the entire trim and baseboards with painter's tape, I follow this trick. Pick a thin cardboard like this. Then hold it at an angle under the baseboard. Then use a paintbrush to apply the primer. After priming two coats, apply the paint. I'm using ultra white for all the trims and baseboards. This is the same color I use for my sliding barn door build. Next, let's mount the doors. First, add the hinges on the door side. Then place a riser on the door bottom to align the door hinge to the frame hinge. Screw the center hinge first and then proceed to the top and bottom. Next, attach the door handles back. Here, I use the same hinges but I am updating the door handles with this quick set privacy lever handles. The black color is going to look amazing on these doors. Next, paint the wall. Before you start, clean the wall surface. I just used a floor mop for this. Next, turn off the power and remove the electrical cover plates. Then prep the painting areas by taping off the edges. But I like to use this edge painting tool. It's precise and will spare your time from applying painter's tape. By the way, the color I'm using for the wall is Whisper White. Once done, add the cover plates back. Here I'm updating the outlets and switches as well with new ones in white and screwless cover plate. 90% of the job is done and it's already looking bright in here. Next, I'm getting rid of these globe lights on the ceiling and adding something modern. I will leave the product link in the description below. Finally, for the decor, I bought these photo frames for a great deal from the local craft store. I made some abstract paintings and hung the frame at equal distance on the wall. Here comes the before and after shots for you. This hallway is now bright 
light and white with black hardware accents. The ceiling lights turned out to be a great find for this project. I like the fact that this light comes with the diffuser and the bulb inside is not visible. Even with a limited budget, you can certainly transform any space with simply painting and swapping the hardware. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed and do check out how I built a floating seat for the bay window or how I built this floating nightstands with clever storage to hide power cords. Tata baby see you.